to present the 2018 wet season and also the 2018 hurricane season outlook, I invite Mr. Kenneth Kerr, our climatologist, to the podium. Kenneth. Thank you, Mr. Big. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not bore you with too much scientific jargon. Uh, you're a bit behind time as well. But I will highlight a few features that are currently guiding our wet and hurricane seasons outlook. Notable here, there is a pattern of cooler than average temperatures in waters surrounding Trinidad and Tobago and between the Eastern Caribbean islands and Africa. These waters have been cooler than average. Uh, for the same period last year, they are much cooler now than they were for each period or each month last year. And this has implications for the early part of the wet season. In addition, cool waters in the eastern and central tropical Pacific Ocean continue to warm and are now in neutral conditions, meaning that it is neither La Nina nor El Nino. This is reflected in, in our La Nina, El Nino outlook at the bottom of the screen, and it really means that La Nina or El Nino will have very little to no effect at the start of the wet season. However, the current ocean warming is predicted to continue during the local wet season, and this has implications for the late hurricane season. Here, a pattern of atmospheric pressure over our region has been trending higher than usual since January and is predicted to remain on the positive sli side and slightly so up to the end of May. This stronger than usual air pressure pattern promotes gustier winds in our region, cooler sea surface temperatures in our regions, and a slightly faster moving tropical wave tracks as they progress across the Atlantic Ocean towards us. Our climate outlook captured these large scale conditions, along with some of the micro scale microclimates in Trinidad and Tobago, but not all. Now I present the wet and hurricane season outlook, which reflects the type of severe weather conditions we typically get during the season. This includes high impact tropical wave and heavy rainfall, high winds, hot spells, tropical storms and hurricanes, and risks such as floods, landslides, and spikes in dengue cases. So, maximum temperatures in terms of the forecast are expected to be warmer than usual with probabilities in excess of 70% for this to occur. So we are quite confident here that we are going to get maximum temperatures that are warmer than usual. At the same time, night temperatures are expected to be warmer than usual with minimum temperatures expected to exceed the average. This has implication for energy usage and for agriculture. In terms of uh, energy uses, we are talking about the use of your air conditioned units, and we know that has implication on our pockets. Ladies and gentlemen, our climate continue to warm. Hot days and hot spells continue to be an excessive heat risk for heat sensitive persons, livestock and sectors that are sensitive to these, uh, this kind of climate. Our outlook, as you can see here, favors higher than usual number of hot spell days during the wet season. There is a 45 to 55% chance for at least 28 hot spell days during the season, with August to October likely to produce the most frequent and severe hot spell days. And we expect to feel these, especially in our cities and urban areas. Let me make a point here. 
hot spell does not mean no rain. So I'm correcting that right away. In fact, when we have hot spells, we tend to have more intense thunderstorms. We continue to provide our wet season dengue outlook for the St. David, St. Andrew County, where we have a good data set for dengue cases. And this outlook is based strictly on observed and forecast climatic conditions. For the month, June, all the way to August, our outlook of probability of dengue cases has a 58% chance for above normal number of dengue cases for the county and the most likely number that can be expected in the county during that period is about 95. For the period September to November, there is a 42% chance for near normal dengue cases with the number likely to be closer to 242 and even though it's near normal, it typically shows that during that period is when they tend to have the higher number of dengue cases. So 242 is quite normal for that region during that period and that is what we expect. Moving to our rainfall forecast, our forecast probabilities favor a slower than usual onset to full-blown wet season conditions and as of now, within a couple of days, we will see a declaration of the wet season because there's a tropical wave on its way. Uh, but we don't expect it to be full blown just as yet. We expect dry and usual conditions uh, during July to August with below average rainfall totals favored as the most likely category when we compare this with what is near normal and above normal. Because exceptionally dry conditions during June to August can have devastating impacts on the local water sector, we considered what was the chance for the rainfall during June to August being in the lowest 10% of historical June to August rainfall. As indicated here, the outlook favors a slightly enhanced chance for rainfall totals with, within the lowest 10% of climatology in the southwestern area with a moder moderate chance elsewhere. In our view, a moderate chance is still too high to be comfortable water sector, especially in areas where our country's key water intakes are located. With current cooler and average temperatures expected to warm by September, our outlook has shifted and now has probabilities that favor September to November to be wetter than usual, with above normal totals having the largest chance of occurring for the period. When we speak of above normal, we are speaking of totals that are greater than 125% of the average. Overall, however, we expect the wet season to be an erratic one, with daily to monthly extremes expected, with the outlook for the overall uh, rainfall totals being near normal, that is between 75% and 100%, 125% of average. Moving to the forecast for the upcoming hurricane season, and we are forecasting for the upcoming hurricane season in the area of interest for Trinidad and Tobago, where we have forecast for the last five years. We are predicting here a 42% chance for near normal season in this area here, near normal, 42% chance as the most likely, but there is still a smaller 33% chance for a below normal season and only a 25% chance for an above normal season in this location here. In terms of number of storms, there is a 68% likelihood for one to four named storms forming in this area of interest, of which one to two could become hurricanes in the area. But 
we believe the most likely case is for three named storms forming in this area with one becoming a hurricane. On average, we typically get three named storms in this area of interest for us. You would hear that other agencies are saying that it's above normal season for the Atlantic hurricane season, but that's for the whole Atlantic area. We are concentrating on our area here, and that is where we are forecasting for. What does this mean for Trinidad and Tobago? There is a strong relationship between the number of storms or hurricanes forming in the area of interest and the threat of making landfall in Trinidad and Tobago. A near normal season does not mean that we are off the hook or that there won't be tropical storm or hurricane impacts. In fact, it is not unusual for tropical storms to impact Trinidad in an underperforming year in the area of interest, as occurred for those of you who can remember in 2005, as shown here, Emily was only one of two storms forming in the area of interest. Yet, this is one, the other one is Emily, yet Emily directly affected us in a very low performing year. So, what we are trying to say here is that citizens should prepare, no matter what the outlook says, because it only takes one tropical storm or hurricane to make it an active year here for us in Trinidad and Tobago, as we regrettably found out last year with respect to Brett. So, in conclusion, we are offering a number of takeaway messages and headlines. Another erratic wet season with a slower than usual onset is ahead for 2018. In fact, as I said before, the season will get started in a couple of days from now. The chance of tropical storm or hurricane activity affecting Trinidad and Tobago remains high. Sunny skies in the wet season, especially in the drier than usual start, can turn cloudy with intense rainfall in less than half an hour. So stay informed um, on these conditions that could change rapidly. Heavy and prolonged events, rainfall events are expected to increase in frequency as the season progress and this poses serious risk of flooding and landslides. The wet season as well bring potential for lightning strikes and floods. So we ask you to be prepared for power outages if you live in a flood prone area, have a plan in case flood waters quickly threaten your home. Citizens are asked to use the seasonal rainfall outlook to prepare so that unpreventable flooding do not turn into unmanageable disasters. We urge you to urge your constituents, your burgesses, and your stakeholders to be sandbag ready Expect rainy weather impacts such as increased road travel times as this can reduce productivity and we know how important that is to the country at this time. We say expect the unexpected, it's the rainy season. Have a plan, have the needful or the resources to survive for about three days to seven days during the season. And most importantly, don't be vulnerable, be sensible. Act now and prepare for heavy rainfall, floods, high winds, hot spells, and spikes in dengue cases. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. There you have it.